Would you like to know one, one of the main problems with the Church of God today, or the so-called Church of God? There's two main problems. Most of the churches are completely dead, which would probably be better. And the other part of the churches, the mega churches, the TV evangelists, the so-called uh, leaders in certain communities, they're lukewarm. Now, it would be technically better if they were dead than if they were lukewarm. Because in the scriptures, on different occasions, we saw dead people being raised from the dead. You never saw a lukewarm person stop their lukewarmness, did you? Either you was cold or you was hot. As the Lord Jesus says for the church of Laodicea. Now you notice when Jesus is talking through the apostle John about the church of Laodicea. He said, behold, I stand and knock. In other words, the church had locked Jesus out. And that's the problem with most of the churches now. I ask you, why aren't we turning the world upside down for the Lord Jesus Christ? You know what the first problem is? Our first problem is spiritually, spiritually we need to bathe our mind and our hearts first. See, that's why Paul says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no preparation for the flesh. In other words, disrobe yourself of you. Understand the righteousness of Jesus Christ, your filthy rags. Clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. Take off your worldliness. Take off your, your pride. Take off all of your knowledge and submit to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Paul says when he was writing in Romans, I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. See, there's a lot of people who know a lot about God. They read a lot of scriptures. They can quote the scriptures. The devil can quote the scriptures. But the difference is they don't know the God of the scriptures they're quoting. See, get away with your religion. Get away with impressing other people by how much you know about God. Get to know him because you don't want to be one of those people on the last day when he says, uh, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. The church of God, those who's calling themselves the church of God in all the world, especially in the West, we got more resources. We got more ways to communicate the gospel. We got more books written, written on God. We know the Greek, the Hebrew. We can break down words. But my question is, why are we not effective? Well, it's very simple why we're not effective. There was a little incident 50 days after Jesus had rose from the dead. It was called Pentecost. There was a couple of fishermen who were complete cowards. They was hiding in the upper room. Jesus told them to wait over there. You guys are not ready yet. I've been training you for three years, but you're not ready yet. What I need you to do is go over and wait in the upper room until you are endured with power. Now that power is going to come up, come from on high. My father promised you about this power. I told you that I was going to send you another comforter who's going to indwell you. Now something changed on the day of Pentecost. For those uh, so-called disciples who became apostles after they were empowered with the Holy Spirit. So the only conclusion I can come up with is that when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. It's obvious that there's a lot of people in churches, a lot of ministers in the pulpit that are not born again. Because if you're born again, that means you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit is filling you, you don't have to be raised in the dead, but you should have power to raise dead hearts. Why is it that you have communities or filled with churches? You have uh, United States has got more Bibles than church. You can get a free Bible anywhere. But there is no power in those words that they're saying because the devil is not afraid of you quoting scriptures. 
The devil is afraid of you believing in the God of scriptures. Once you have received the, received the Holy Spirit, then you will be endowed with power. That's what the scripture says. You would be endowed with power. You don't have power without the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. When Jesus is telling Nicodemus, you got to be born again, he's saying the only way you can be effective to be able to work the works of him who sent me is to be indwelled with the Holy Spirit. Now, that's a dirty word to most people because they, they view you as being, you, you must be one of those born agains. You must be one of those weird Christian people. Well, that's good if they talk to you, talk to you about that. See, some of your problems is that you want to be friends of the world. See, the church has become an entertainment center. All they're doing is entertaining people, making them comfortable for hell. They're bringing them in. They got all kind of programs, dance programs, meme programs, uh, clowning around, making a complete clown show. We got enough clowns in the world. We don't need clowns in the church. But here we have it. The Lord Jesus is talking to the church of Laodicea. He said, you're lukewarm. I wish that you were cold or hot, but your problem is, is that you're lukewarm and I want to just spit you out my mouth. Can you imagine the master talking like that? Now, you can remember that John is the disciple who was laying on the bosom of Jesus while he was on earth. But now, this Jesus is the risen Lord, King of glory now. John is is uh, prostrate before a holy God. So if you want to understand why the church is not going to be effective, it's because we're too busy entertaining the world. The only way we can keep them in the church, we got to entertain them. They're saying that the word of God is not enough. Isn't that arrogant? We have to entertain these lost souls, these dead individuals. See, this is like going down to the cemetery. You say, I'm going to bring a whole band with me. I'm going to bring a bunch of memes, mimes. I'm going to bring all kind of dancers in the whole nine yards. We're going to have a full band. Parade the whole nine yards. Big screen TVs. Full orchestra. And we're going to play in the graveyard to the dead people. How in the world is the dead people who are in the grave going to hear you if you're in the grave? If they're dead, how can they hear what you're saying? Entertainment does not does anything for the dead heart. When somebody's heart is dead, you can entertain all day long at the graveyard. See, Jesus didn't take a full band down to raise Lazarus from the dead. When he when he went in to raise the uh, the the young girl or the young man, did did, did he take a a marching band in there with him. He said, come on, Peter, James, and John. Let's go in and, and get work done. Matter of fact, when he got ready to raise Lazarus, he says, I'm going to get you fellas involved too. Why don't you go over there and unroll that stone back for me? Come on, unroll the stone. They say, uh, Lord, by now he's stinking. Yeah, that's the, 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 the state of the church that by now. By now, we stink it. We stink it with our religion. We stink it with our dead worship. We stink it because we're doing everything but getting to know the God of the Bible. Because once you robe yourself or clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning that you got to take off something. Because a lot of people are saying they're saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell? Is that the only thing he's supposed to save you from? How about saving you from addiction? How about saving you from pornography? How about saving you from lying and cheating? Do you want to get saved from that? You said, no, I don't want to really get saved from that. I just don't want to go to hell. I want to be comfortable here, and I, I want to do my own thing, but I, I don't really want to go to hell. Well, chances are good chances that you're not saved anyway. You will be going to hell. Because anytime you're saying, I want to hold on to what the world, the filth of what the world is offering me, you're like the dog who throws up and goes back and eat his own vomit. You're like the pig they clean up and he goes back and waddle in the mud. Pigs are comfortable water in the mud. But I thought sheep didn't like mud. We have now more things 
more resources than ever before and we're worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Now I ask you, how could the Lord be pleased when the preachers are coming on the air talking about how big their churches is, how many airplanes they got, what kind of cars they got, how much money they got. I didn't remember Jesus talking about that, but he shook up the world. I think it was Peter who says, uh, uh, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, give unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rise up. Not in the name of your Rolls Royce, not in the name of your gold. I don't care how much gold you got. The reason we're not effective and we're going to be held accountable for not doing the work that God has called us to do because we're too busy entertaining people. You, may, you need to take your marching band away from the graveyard. The church has become a graveyard. Dead sinners come to church and all we do is entertain them. We're entertaining you, getting you ready for hell. How does that even sound? Entertaining people, getting them ready for hell. We can't change society because the church is dead. Take that back. Most of them are lukewarm. The dead ones, we may have a chance of raising them from the dead. Because how is it possible that you have no power? How is it possible that the church of the living God has no power to change minds and hearts? You know why? Because they have not clothed themselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. They're clothed in their own righteousness. Once you close yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ, you understand how wretched and how vile and how filthy you are. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no preparations for the flesh is what the scripture says. See, on the day of Pentecost, uh, when, when, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, it said they were speaking in language that they never learned before. There was power vested in them once they received the Holy Spirit. Now I ask you, is it a different Holy Spirit, the one that and the well of them and the one who's supposed to be living and breathing today and all these believers all over the world. Have you noticed that you can get a better fire started in any kind of churches that's in an oppressed nation? We got too much freedom in order to be talking about the Holy Spirit. We're too comfortable. We don't want to upset our friends. We want to stay friends. We want to go to the, the, the local community. We want to play golf with our buddies. We're too interested in entertaining the world system we're more concerned with not offending those we know than not offending God Almighty. But one day, when you have to stand before the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ, are you going to say, I wanted to do it? I had good intentions because all your motives, all your intents, all your thoughts, everything you've ever done, thought, and said will be displayed before him. And you don't have, you're representing yourself. Nobody can have a dream team on the judgment seat. Those same lawyers who thought they were dream teams, they're going to have to answer too. And the books are going to be open. And there's not going to be any excuses because he already know what you did. Here you go. What's your defense? I have no defense. Right now, you better apply the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and clothe yourself with the righteousness of Jesus Christ and make no preparations for your own righteousness or you will bust hell wide open. It is arrogant. It is the ignorance for anyone to think that they are good enough to get to heaven. There ain't but one who's ever been good enough to go to heaven. The rest of us need substitution. We need a substitution sacrifice. The Lord Jesus is that substitute sacrifice, uh, but he requires something. Yes, you must Place your faith in him, but he wants to be Lord. You don't want to just be saving. Anybody who's drowning wants to save you. Throw me a life jacket over here. After you get out, you don't have no respect for the person who saved you out of a drowning sea. So he saved you out of the muck and the mire in this world, and you decide you're going to ignore him now. It ain't going to work that way. That's not going to end well for you. I advise you. To get yourself some salve, as he told the church of Laodicea. Put it on your eyes because you're blind. He said, and you think that you are clothed, but you're naked. So you're naked because you got your own righteousness on. Anybody trying to get into heaven with their own righteousness, uh, you're naked. The only way you can be clothed is clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Put your pride behind. Stop telling people uh, how impressed you are with yourself. Because all that's going to mean nothing. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, 
none of us are getting into heaven. See, once you become clothed with him, then you can start working for your bling, your heavenly bling. But you can't work for the heavenly bling until you put off you and put on him. Therefore, the church is suffering. Society is suffering because the church is supposed to be a lighthouse. But they're not spreading any light. Matter of fact, they act just like the world. That the church is supposed to be salt. But if the salt has lost its savior, well, what good is it? I, I was talking to someone and they told me, Angela, as a matter of fact, and, and she says that the only way salt could lose its, um, its, 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 its saltiness is to dilute it and mix it with something else. Hmm. I said, that's a word there, girl. That's a word. Because our problem is, is that we have diluted the word of God and we're supposed to be salt, but we're mixing all this iodine and everything else with the word of God and it's making it no longer salty. It ain't good for nothing. Now throw it in the street. Maybe somebody skidding on an icy road may be able to stop the skid. So our job now as true believers is to stop playing church and get busy doing his work. If you have been born again, born of the spirit, you have the same power that raised Lazarus from the dead. You have the same power when, when Solomon had finished building the temple. It says that the presence of the Lord came down and the ministers couldn't even go in there because there was so much power there. That power dwells in you. What you gonna do with it is my question. The Lord Jesus wants soldiers. He wants bond servants who will serve him and not them th themselves. If the church of God was on fire and allowing him to be Lord of, of your life, you could shake up the world.